Hi everyone, I'm Brian with Obedia, and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the new file browser in Ableton Live 9. Ableton was kind enough to provide me with Ableton Live 9 in order to do these overviews, and so I urge you to check out their website at ableton.com. Now, uh, the new file browser in Ableton Live 9 is a little bit of a departure from what we knew from previous versions of Ableton. Uh, it's been revamped, it's been tightened up, and it has uh, been given a facelift to allow you to make quicker and easier usage of it while you are working with sessions in Ableton. So let's talk about the old and the new and how these are going to help you while you're working in Ableton Live. Now the file browser is uh, of course always accessible in your Ableton session by clicking on this button right here in the top left hand corners is going to show or hide your browser. If you're like me you probably have your browser open all the time because you're consistently browsing it in order to add plugins, sounds, and etc. to your Ableton session. Now when you first get into Ableton Live 9 you're going to notice that some things are the same and some are different. Now what's the same? The same is still going to be the instruments tab and the audio effects tab, the MIDI effects, and your plugins. Now instruments of course are going to encompass any of the instruments that were installed uh, with Ableton that are Ableton instruments. Audio effects are the audio effects that install with Ableton, MIDI effects of course the MIDI effects installed with Ableton and plugins are going to encompass all of your third-party plugins which you have previously installed. You're going to notice some new sections here under the categories heading and the first of those is going to be sounds. Now sounds is going to allow you to browse through any of the sounds which were installed with Ableton with your packs uh, and this is going to allow you to quickly browse these by making use of various categories. You can see right here I have bass and I can browse down and I can find a number of different bass sounds by simply clicking on one of these. Now if I click on one of these I'm going to preview the sound of that uh, current sound that I have selected that will allow me to listen to it before I drag and drop it into my Ableton session. Next up I have the drums category also pretty self-explanatory. This is going to encompass all the drums that are installed with Ableton and this is going to allow me to uh, quickly and easily access all of the installed drum presets this will also include full drum kits, individual drum hits, and etc. Moving on down, I have the Max for Live category. Now, the Max for Live category is going to allow me to access all of my Max for Live devices and presets. This includes Max audio effects, instruments, and MIDI effects. So if you have Max for Live installed with Ableton Live, you're going to have access to all of these different Max effects and instruments to add to your session. If you haven't checked out Max by Cycling74, Definitely check it out. If you're using Ableton, you're going to find it to be a very important part of your productions, I think. Next up, I have clips. Now, this is going to give me access to all of my installed live clips. And there's a lot of these, depending on how many packs you have installed and what version of Ableton you are making use of, and etc. Uh, this is going, again, to allow me to preview any of these clips by simply clicking on one of them and this will uh, allow me to listen to the sound of that clip before I add it to my session. Next I have samples and the samples tab is simply going to allow me to access all of my samples which Ableton has found and categorized on my system. So that's some of the new and the old. Let's move on to what is specifically the new in Ableton Live 9's file browser and that's the places section. Now places is going to come with a few pre-configured sections and then the rest of these you can configure yourself. The first of these new sections is going to be packs. Now packs are Ableton Live packs which will be installed with your Ableton installation and uh, these are going to encompass many different sounds that you can add to your Ableton session. I have here the Breakbeats by Cutmaster Kurt uh, pack and browsing down and through it I can find some of the clips. I can add each of these clips to my session. I can also preview them by simply clicking on one of these clips. Moving on down I have my user library. Now the user library is going to be the default location for items that I save myself including default presets, grooves, uh, my personalized racks and device presets, my own samples, live clips, and etc. etc. So as I begin to populate this section all of those different racks, presets, etc. will start to pop up in the user library section. 
Next up, I have the legacy library folder. This is my Live 8 library from having Live 8 installed on my computer. This allows me to make use of all of the Live 8 library sounds that were installed with Ableton Live 8. Finally, I have the current project folder browser. And this is going to allow me to access all the files that are contained in the currently active project. Um, so if you are using let's say Ableton for DJing this could be really useful because if you're like me you'll probably find that if you're DJing with Ableton you'll remove clips as you go along in your set and you may want to bring some of those back in so the quick and easy way to do that without having to browse through your files is to simply make use of the current project folder browser this will allow you to browse through that project uh, in whatever format it was last saved in and then you can find clips uh, sounds etc that were in that session when you previously saved it drag and drop them back into your Ableton Live session as you're working with it. Quick and easy way to access all the files in your current active uh, project. Now moving on you're going to see here that I have four folders that are they're fairly nondescript. These are my user added folders. Now I myself I have a couple different live set folders on my computer and I've added those live sets so that I can browse through them and pull in information from my previous live sets. And I've done that by making use of the Add Folder button. Now if you click on the Add Folder button, this is going to give you access to the Add Folder uh, pop-up window. This is where I can browse on my computer, find a folder that I would like to add to my Ableton file browser. After I add that folder, it's going to show up right here under my Places. And a bonus very cool feature here is that Ableton's going to scan that folder, or if I add a hard drive, it's going to scan that hard drive. It's going to scan through that location, and it's going to categorize uh, in the background all of the information that's in that folder. The reason that this is very useful is that this is going to allow you to quickly browse through all of these different folders and categories and etc. that you have uh, in your Ableton file browser. So let's say that I wanted to find base. I could simply type base in the search box here in my file browser. And now by clicking through each of these different sections, uh, whether it be under places or under categories, I'm going to find anything which Ableton has found and categorized which has the word base in the file name or has been categorized as a base preset, a base sound, etc etc so this is the quick and easy way to be able to browse through your samples your clips your presets for very specific sounds find them drag them into your Ableton project that you're currently working on and continue on with producing music so the entire purpose when you really come down to it behind the new file browser in Ableton 9 is to speed up your workflow. Uh, the previous file browser worked great, we all used it for quite some time, but this is a major improvement, especially the ability to add our own user folders. It's going to make things much, much easier because if you are like me, you probably found that you were browsing consistently to a number of different folders on your hard drive, you're going back and forth, back and forth, it got a little bit tedious and now you're not going to have to do that. You can add your samples folder immediately to your places section and those samples will all be scanned, categorized, and you can quickly search through them by making use of the search function uh, in Ableton Live 9's file browser. So there you go guys. Uh, I think the file browser in Ableton 9 is definitely the best yet. I'm finding that it's really speeding up my own workflow so I hope that it helps to speed up yours. If you have questions or comments please feel free to leave them here on my video or get in touch with me on Facebook and Twitter and through email at brian at obedia.com. Even better, take it one more step. Give me a call. Work directly with myself or another Obedia tutor find out how we can help you one-on-one -on -one and help you get the most out of your technology by teaching you how to use your digital audio hardware and software help you tame your technology that's what we do best here at Obedia. I want to thank you guys as always for tuning in and watching our videos I look forward to seeing you next time and take care